without much ado and and welcoming you all i would also like to welcome our first keynote speaker mr mahesh venkatraman you know on to the dais and and take us through the first very keynote which questions the very important item whether artificial about artificial intelligence for those of you you know who do not know about mahesh let me say a few words mahesh is the managing director at accenture a very good friend and a very strong supporter of community events like stc he has been a acclaimed speaker he has been a teacher he has been an influencer and currently in his role as managing director at accenture he leads the function for software testing resiliency and reliability as well mahesh has always been inspirational and thought provoking and at times he has also been credited with questioning our own fundamental assumptions so without much ado let's all welcome mahesh you know to start his first keynote mahesh over to you thanks uh, pradeep uh, good evening good morning thanks pradeep for the introduction and uh, really uh, looking uh, uh, very happy to be here this morning or uh, this evening depending on where you are and uh, i'm going to talk about uh, something that has been so much spoken about uh, heard about in all the forums uh, everybody everybody is interested in ai and uh, people talk so much about ai is going to change the world and uh, it doesn't need a lot of knowledge to say that ai is going to change the world but you know what as a career tester uh, i i always think that we have to uh, understand uh, the black box the outside we have to understand how the things uh, work inside the the some amount of white box and also be a lot of uh, i would say a, a certain degree of skepticism a healthy skepticism because our job is not just to test our job is to question to ask the right questions and evaluate the system for its uh, fit for use fit to, fit for purpose so i will not be again reiterating uh, not so much about um, about artificial intelligence because that is that is very well known i will take a slightly contra approach because that is required for our community we have to be we have to question what does it mean how does it work because if we take it for granted we will be passing all the tests and that is not good for the customer right so you can uh, see my screen now i'll just kind of you know many of you would have seen this um, this this um, 360 uh you know abundance uh, i'll just quickly take you through this to to kind of reiterate the promise that everybody talks about you know sundar pichai talks about uh, you know profound implications uh, than electricity and fire and elon musk uh, talks about competitiveness then um, the thoughts are uh, either you are using ai or you are out of business um artificial intelligence uh, will uncover so much value and uh, and then this is very very important for us today's topic ai will reach human level intelligence by 2029 every word here is significant so we have to understand what is what does this sentence mean and then we know uh, ai is going to uh, help in autonomous delivery uh, drones then auto autonomous cars Uh, flying cars uh, you know managed by ai then this many of you would have seen this youtube video very funny video but uh, if you just look at it because you, you you can see the the robo dancing and jumping and then falling and then recovering it's very funny to look at it but look at the amount of technology that's gone into it so as testers we cannot but uh, be awestruck at the enormous amount of technology but that is where it should stop you can't be or struck beyond that point then um, some talk about how the ai in a reading contest uh, ai beat the the lawyers 
and then of course the human ai collaboration in various industries automate the routine humanize the exceptional and uh, there are uh, there is uh, research going on in um, uh, in brain computer interface with whatever is implanted in my brain uh, i'm hoping it won't happen very soon uh, that will have ai uh, talking about neurograins rice sized brain implants then an electrode uh, that is that has helped a blind woman uh, uh, restore her vision and um, you know uh, where um, you can um, you can have your own avatar you know somebody else some other machine is behaving like you because that machine is connected with your brain and whatever you think and whatever you want that machine will be able to um, replicate fantastic now let's examine let's take the skeptical hat right now uh, the views are not my employer uh, employers they are mine and uh, they are drawn from various readings and my own conversations with uh, industry researchers and attending conferences and with clients so this is very profound if the human brain were so simple that we could understand it we would also we would be so simple that we couldn't if you cannot understand this no problem but the 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 implication of this is human brain is so complex so trying to simplify it and then um, uh, emulating it or simulating is is not going to replicate it simulation or emulation is not replication let's see how right so we will uh, in this uh, keynote we will look at the current um, state of artificial intelligence promises pitfalls we'll see some models of human intelligence a model is only an understanding a model is not the real thing as many of us know we have uh, had our modeling and simulation in our college and many of us do modeling uh, not the photo modeling but scientific modeling and then we compare and contrast and then see what does it mean for quality engineers what does it mean for testers so what is ai um, lots of definition um, some definition is for example is autopilot in an aircraft ai you can argue it is not ai because it is very rule based or you could argue since it is intelligent it is artificial intelligence but then some people are saying ai is whatever hasn't been done yet is ai but everybody talks about perception of the environment and actions to maximize a goal you have a goal you perceive the environment and the machine perceive the environment and maximize its goals right now the question comes there is no clarity on what is biological in, uh, intelligence as as a human being if you tell me i am intelligent what does it mean i am unique and second thing is there is no artificial general intelligence many of them are very specific to um specific applications right now this is my idea of what is intelligence you could have rule based behavior which is i would say last 35 40 years of computer revolution you've had a lot of these uh, if x then do y everything that you see today your mobile phone your tv remote your even your cars normal cars have their own rule based automatic manual transmission there are rules built in your program is rule based then we have the data driven which, which is where we are here today uh, ingest data come uh, perform analytics for example uh, your uh, your facebook recommendation or um, uh, you know image uh, recognition or um, fraud detection anything you see or your even your uber uber application based on data the context uber application behaves differently your maps they're all data there is no the programming is of course there but the data drives the behavior data analytics some amount of past data drives the behavior now what we don't have today and this is where we all have to understand is that computer uh, ai cannot still reason no matter what you are told there is no reasoning there are rules there is data but there is no reasoning for example if a doctor tells me uh let's not talk about medical let's say if um, 
an insurance company is applying AI to, to uh, detect and um, uh, make approvals of, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if a loan company, for example, uh, wants to approve loans and the engine says X should not be given the loan, there is no reason given because the machine only goes by past data and patterns and says um, uh, that this person should not be given the loan, right? And that is also a big problem today because, uh, you know, machines are accused of bias because uh, law and order enforcement, police say this area is crime prone. And then people say, how can you say that? The, the police say, look, because machines tell, uh, the AI is telling me, but then what is the reason? You know, so you cannot, so it has been accused of bias and counterfactuals. Counterfactual is very important in our day-to-day -day life. We always think, if I had not taken that route yesterday, I would have been on time. If I had not taken a crossing yesterday, I probably would have cured myself. If I had not spoken like that to my boss, I could have got a promotion. Computers cannot do that. So two things today, AI and machine learning uh, cannot do is causal reasoning and counterfactuals. There's a lot of probabilistic um, uh, you know, approach to cure uncertainty. We will talk about uncertainty and then how does it matter to us? And then we will talk. Uh, and, and then we all know logic is always the remedy for any kind of complex rules, right? Now, why is AI and machine learning nowadays so much spoken about? It's two simple reasons. AI has always been there on the research uh, topics the last 40 years, maybe even more. But two reasons, one is enormous amount of computing power. You know, now your mobile phone has got more computing power than the PC that you had 30 years back, if you were uh, as old as me. Um, uh, or uh, And second is your memory, enormous amount of computing memory. These two reasons have led to a huge explosion of AI uh, compared to other technologies. Look at this graph here, this, this line just going huge up. Right now, why is AI is capturing everybody's interest? If you're a computer scientist, you love AI. AI. You're a data scientist, of course, you will love AI. You're a social scientist, you'll talk about ethics and you want to talk about bias and you want to talk about how computers can um, disrupt uh, humans. Uh, social scientists, you, you love it. Psychologists and neuroscientists, a lot of these disciplines are getting into AI, which was, which was not there before. Cognitive scientists, you love AI. Industry application engineer, you are, you, are industry, you are an insurance industry or a security industry. Whatever industry, banking industry, you will love AI. And of course, philosophers will love AI because there is so much that AI offers to them to philosophize. And you won't believe this. There's so much in philosophy that can be offered to AI. You won't believe this. Uh, we, will, we will see a glimpse of how philosophy can actually directly contribute to AI, rather than AI contributing to philosophical discussions. Now, we all know this image recognition, speech recognition, fraud detection, disease diagnosis. This is very, very important. I want to talk a bit more about disease diagnosis uh, claiming to be the latest frontier. We will see games, map routing, all every day it touches our lives, especially speech recognition, image recognition, map routing, uh, fraud detection is primarily for, for customer, right? Now, uh, we, uh, now AI applications, uh, you have recognition, like facial recognition, recommendation, you know, you go to Facebook, you know, most likely most of the Facebook recommendation that, uh, that comes uh, on my Facebook, is true that I have some connection with them. Uh, clustering and classification, uh, you may want to look, look it up uh, in Google. Uh, clustering is primarily called unsupervised machine learning and classification is supervised. Some of these terminologies in machine learning are very, very misleading. Unsupervised and supervised. Unsupervised doesn't mean that I throw some data and the computer learns. That's what people think. It is not as simple as that. Unsupervised is primarily a uh, a machine learning term for clustering. When we say clustering, it means you throw some data at the machine. The machine says these uh, 15 sets of data are similar. And these 35 sets of data are similar in another sense. 
So it basically um, looks at commonality, similarity, and clusters them into pockets of, um, of uh, groups. And classification is similar, like, you know, you say um, this application is from a bona fide uh, applicant, and this application is, so you know what are the class, what are the various categories, and you categorize them. And then, of course, prediction and reinforcement uh, learning is a constant learning, um, you know, based on the rewards. For example, you want to uh, maximize your uh, profit from uh, from trading, and then you feed in how much money you made, and then uh, it starts to automatically uh, learns uh, its mistakes from its mistakes and uh, converges on your uh, goal or reward, right? Now, uh, there are lots of other disciplines. I think people who are interested should read the book Pedro Domingos because all of us think mostly deep learning is uh, machine learning, but there is so much more. And Pedro Domingos talks about uh, five categories. I've added one more here. Uh, logic, uh, deduction, deep learning. Uh, deep learning primarily uh, uh, mimics the brain structure, which is it's got a lot of neurons. And if I see a, a cat, uh, there are certain neurons getting fired based on weightage. And then I know it's a cat. And then when I see a, a, a tiger, I know a cat is not a tiger because certain other neurons get fired internally. Genetic programming derives uh, inspiration from uh, human evolution. So over a period of time, the machine starts to uh, modify its own uh, programming rules uh, to maximize a certain reward. For example, the Boston Robo, uh, you would have seen it is jumping over obstacles, right? And then falling. So when it falls, it starts to modify. Very similar to reinforcement learning, but more involved and more evolution oriented. Probability is also a very important part of machine learning and AI. And we saw clustering and classification. The last is associative intelligence, knowledge maps. Uh, this is very important because uh, this is not normally um, uh, spoken in AI circles. This is primarily connections between things. For example, I and what some of you would be connected, uh, uh, you know, in terms that we are, we love testing, or we would have worked in some earlier company together. So it's basically connection maps. So. So um, statistics, analytics, machine learning, and it, uh, they all make up the AI components. And then you have uh, three levels of uh, output from any machines, which picks up, uh, which uh, ingest data, your discovery and prediction and uh, causal explanation as which it is not there. We will not explain this slide a lot more. Now you have different levels of trust. How much do I trust an AI engine? Do I just trust it to provide? Uh, the decision, do I trust it to make a recommendation or do I trust it to act autonomously? For example, for a loan sanction company, does the company trust the loan sanction machine learning engine to automatically send a mail to the applicant saying your loan is uh, sanctioned or rejected? But then the problem in relying too much on machine learning is it could be open for scrutiny. People might ask what is the explanation for rejecting or or or, or, uh, or accepting? Then you don't have an answer, so you could be uh, you are liable for uh, for a court case, right? So this makes me wonder: Is it really artificial intelligence or decision intelligence? All that we saw was primarily, um, you know, allowing the machine to decide, right? So AI definitely holds huge promise for individual, society, and enterprises. Now, there are three or four challenges. One is that, you know, it does not, ex explainability is not there in AI, and often correlation and causation are, uh, are uh, uh, confused. We know the difference between correlation and causation. And then there is a lack of counterfactual. There is no reasoning like if we had not given the loan to this person, what would have happened? Or if we had given the loan to this person, what would have happened, right? And then data is the weakest link in AI. If you make decision based on wrong data, then you have a problem. Then some of you who have learned statistics understand the misuse or wrong use of p-value, right? A lot of serious errors, uh, you know, we know over uh, always some kind of uh, news about self-driving cars killing pedestrian. 
um, uh, cancer treatment, IBM Watson, uh, there were criticisms. Uh, criticism that AI, Amazon AI recruiting tool, uh, tool was gender biased, predictions were wrong. And here you can see that these two individuals could be seen as a match. And here this is uh, actually um, a husky, not a, not, a, not a wolf, but you put the husky in a, in a snow atmosphere, it will, the machine learning often uh, classifies this, this as a wolf because it fixes on the background. So there are lots of challenges. And here, if you do a distance between Bangalore and India, you probably will get uh, 17 hours, three minutes. So often AI lacks common sense. Just try now on your on your laptop, but listen to me also when you try it. Um, so this is bit, so this is these are the common problems today in AI, and there are a lot of books which have uh, uh, brought out certain lacunae in the in the current uh, uh, scheme of things. A uh, very good book is Weapons of Math Instruction, uh, Mass Destruction, not mass but math. And then um, there is a lot of uh, criticism that AI is biased, and it uh, you know when you uh, when you do a say crime prevention, you're actually picking out on certain communities. But then to me, you are if you're relying on a machine which is not fully sophisticated, who's to be blamed, right? So you cannot uh, attribute malice to something that is probably not really ready for it. Right. So you know, what is natural intelligence? Uh, suppose, say, you are uh, you have to go and buy a medicine and uh, it's very dark and that medicine is very important for you. And you're walking on the road. It's dark. It's raining. And then there's nobody out there. You see somebody behind you. The, the, the figure is hooded and walking towards you. You look back and you walk fast. Um, that figure is also coming fast. And then suddenly lights go out and you see the silhout against the blue uh, the blue uh, the the full moon and this uh, what do you do you have to go to the pharmacy for the medicine very important to you but you are very very worried and to, to to top it you have some huge amount of cash in your pocket you don't know what to do do you run uh, if you run then you won't get the medicine or you yourself will feel very stupid later or do you continue and and then God forbid if something were to happen. And then this figure comes so close to you and then you see the pharma, the pharma uh, shop in front of you and they are so relieved. But then you see one more figure there. It's all very dark and this figure is closing on you. What do you do? Do you run away or do you go into the pharmacy shop and we don't know who this person is? It's all dark and this area is not a great uh, is known to be a very unsafe area, right? So these are the dilemmas that we face every day, uh, decisions under uncertainty. For example, you ask for a, um, uh, you ask a promotion from your boss, the boss uh, grants you promotion because you've been talking so much, you've been asking so much. But then within one week of your promotion, the boss says, look, you need to go to another city because uh, uh, you, know, you have been promoted and then we need somebody like you senior there. And then you have your family here. So every day, every minute, we have to take decisions under uncertainty. People say the only thing constant is change. But I say the only thing constant in your entire life is not just change, but uncertainty. right? And then many of you would have seen this. Um, um, this. Um, I don't know why it is not showing. Huh. This is Avalanche, a family is picnicking in Alps, and then they are in a restaurant, outdoor restaurant, and then they see the avalanche. And then it falls. Now, what do they do? Do they run away? Or do they wait until they take the photograph? So what do you do? And there is a lot of this is actually a movie called Force Majeure. And this father was criticized for running away, leaving his kids in the lurch. 
So, uh, and then, for example, cancer test, right? You have, if uh, somebody is detected as uh, cancer uh, positive, but then the person doesn't have cancer, then the person will be mistreated. Or the person has cancer and uh, the test says, the AI engine, or whatever you want to call it, says no cancer, there's another consequence. So weighing the consequence, the weighing the consequence of your decision is a very big thing as a human being, apart from creativity, human emotion that I'm not even talking about it, right? Weighing the consequence and taking a call under uncertainty is a big thing as a human being, as a human being and machines today cannot, they cannot reason, they cannot bet, they cannot hypothesize, they cannot go back counterfactuals, they cannot experiment like you do, right? So first and foremost, future of AI is pragmatism in consuming and developing Second is, uh, as an AI consumer, you moderate your expectations, define your goals very clearly, plan for gradual success. Now, as an AI developer or a tester, uh, you have to rein in the hype and you have to have multidisciplinary collaboration uh, as, as a tester, right? And then, you know, uh, we have to understand what are the trade-offs in applying AI? What is the problem? What is the success definition? What level of intelligence are you expecting? What is the cost of poor performance? For example, if I declare somebody as cancer positive and the person doesn't have cancer, what is the cost of that? And then algorithm selection and the quality assurance and audits. These are the, these are the areas where we will play a big role and let not AI, as a tester, you have the responsibility. I have the responsibility of not allowing the hammer looking for a nail. And, uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, there is no time to talk about what other disciplines, uh, especially computation theory of mind, can, uh, can be applied in future uh, to ensure AI really rises up to the, uh, the promise of, um, of natural intelligence. Uh, Pradeep, how much time I have? How much time I have? Pradeep, how much time I have? Hello? Pradeep, how much time I have? You have five more minutes. Okay. So, um, um, so one thing that I wanted to tell you is I've been a great fan of some ancient Indian philosophy text and the logic that has been uh, has been applied in many of those old Indian texts. I am not. I am saying uh, you know there is a lot of uh, today um, activity and research being done to apply many of this logical thinking, logical analysis in modern artificial intelligence. It is not that the ancient Indians uh, were interested in AI. I am not claiming that. But the logic in those texts were a great, are, are a great inspiration for us to develop uh, AI. At the end, um, AI, if you really want to, um, uh, you know, ensure AI, AI is uh, made equal to natural intelligence, we need a sense of identity. Like I have a sense of identity and I have a sense of individuality and I have, a, I have intentions that I, I have certain aspirations, certain ambitions. Uh, I want to kind of be positioned as somebody uh, in my profession, in my personal life. And that is what today defines me and my human intelligence. And machines do not have it. They are, they are either programmed or they're very data driven, right? So finally, in summary, AI is far from being close to natural intelligence the way I have defined it. Realism and pragmatism needed from both consumers and developers and multidisciplinary collaboration is required from humanities, from philosophy, from, from psychology, uh, from cognitive science. And a lot of uh, Indian logic written in many of the old texts, uh, you know, because I am in touch with many foreign um, uh, researchers who are applying many of these principles in not replacing the current AI, but to enrich the, the whole AI and machine learning. And finally, what is the conclusion is human AI collaboration is key to continued success. Um, 
you know, here my favorite slide is, if you look at it, you have the old elephant. Again, some kind of automation was happening those days and we have computer numeric machines. We have sewing machine and we have the autopilot. What is common among all of this is a human being. So human beings will never go out of fashion as testers. Uh, we, our duty is to understand the technology, its implications, its, its implications in wrong usage, in hype, and ensuring our, uh, our analysis and, and testing is in line with that understanding. Thank you. Um, Pradeep, over to you. That's very interesting perspective, Mahesh. And, and I know when I was listening to your talk, you know, the one thing that was reminding me was a conversation with an old friend in Boston University. And, and he said, artificial intelligence cannot be a cure to natural stupidity. You know, and <laughs> and having heard that, you know, now I also realize that, you know, at the end of the day, human intervention is certainly something we cannot take away, you know, even though the artificial intelligence comes into play. And, and I believe that, you know, the joint collaboration is what will make it more successful in application as well. And I think that's a great takeaway for us. And, and certainly we are in an uncertain times. And, and a thank you for reminding us that we should not worry about only the change but we should worry about the uncertainty too you know so so i think that's a great takeaway for me as well you know and and i think uh, we don't have any question and answers at the moment you know but certainly uh, we will post more questions on the stc group uh, we will also be continuing this discussion forward we have many more speakers talking also on ai i would love you to also listen to them and see what as in, it's, it's a great confluence of minds, right? At the end of the day, we all learn from each other. And, and really, thank you for sharing your perspective, Mahesh. Thanks, Pradeep. Thank you all. My pleasure. Yeah. OK, you know, so that's a good start for a day. And I think that's a good question for all of us to keep in mind as to will artificial intelligence help us in really transforming you know, the quality function?